everyone! This is my fifth blog post for the Jane Cass Project. For the last few weeks I've been focusing on making and 3D printing a pan flute. On the 15th of May, the 3D printer arrived in the mail. It didn't take us very long to set up, and we started printing a French horn mouthpiece. The next day I printed version 12 of the pan flute. It ended up that it was too thin and the supports were leaking into the bottom of the print. I took the 3D model back into Blender and worked on thickening it and then adding manual supports. The first print failed about 10 to 15 minutes in. It turned out that the bed needed to be leveled, so that was an easy fix. The second print had a couple of the support legs break a little bit during printing, but luckily the other legs helped support it. Here's an image of the finished print before cleanup. It came out with strands in the pipes, which were due to the supports in between the pipes. I wanted to tweak some settings and try to print it again to see if I could eliminate the issue if possible. I ended up modeling and printing another cleaning tool. It got pretty much all the gunk out with little issue, but it took 2 hours and 30 minutes to print just the cleaning tool, which made it a total of 8 hours to print the pan flute and the cleaning tool. I wanted to get that number down if possible, so I wanted to work on reducing the stringing in between the pipes on the pan flute. I ended up spending the next morning making a version 13 of the pan flute. As you can see from this time lapse, print 1 failed right out of the gate due to the leg support failing. I added rings around the support and then tried again. The second print failed and was unplayable even after I cleaned it up, and it also took 10 hours and was really lumpy and compressed looking. The next day I did some experimenting by removing some of the legs to cut down on print time. I decided to do a 20 minute sample print of the second pipe to see if the supports worked, but I kept running into an issue where the 3D printer wasn't registering the supporting ring on the bottom. I tried tweaking the supporting ring at the bottom multiple times to see if it would help with the print. After quite a few failed prints, it eventually occurred to me that the machine was acting like the rings didn't exist at all. That issue ended up being that the Dremel slicing software needed a minimum thickness of 0.4 millimeters to register that anything was there. I also found that no matter how many times I tried to print the supports with two legs, it just really needed four legs. Even though I eventually got version 14 to print, it still had stringing on the inside, so I had to make a new version 15. Version 15 ended up printing better than version 14, but when I tested the notes, the C pipe was registering as a B pipe. I did much the same with version 16, but it was still a failure. With version 17, I decided to do away with the previous connections entirely and replace it with bars on the outside of the pan flute. The print was a success and there was no more stringing on the inside of the pipes. The notes were also in key according to the online note tester that I was using. This version was nearly the ideal pan flute, however when Kevin tested it he found that it was not very easy to play. I'm now currently in the process of making a training version for the pan flute, so the pan flute is more accessible to everyone. And that was the summary of me designing and 3D printing a pan flute. Please keep watching this space for future updates. And remember that when it comes to 3D printing, every failure is a step towards success. Please feel free to check out janecast.com linked down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching!